Wolverine, Len Wein, Mortal Kombat 2, and Mantis. Inside Comics, I'm Tony. And I'm Nikki. Today on Inside Comics, we'll be reviewing the hit series Mantis, talking to Wolverine creator Len Wein, and reviewing Mortal Kombat 2. But first, let's take a look at comic books in the movies. After years of being ignored by virtually every other medium, the movie industry has discovered what fans have known for years. Comic books make good movies. Come to think of it, movies make good comic books. Please, officer, no loitering. Pass is over, John. Time for something new and improved. Oh, hell. I've always been attracted to two general areas uh, for movie subjects, just my psychological makeup. One area was kind of reality-based films like uh, Wall Street or Reversal of Fortune or Badlands or uh, Papa. Uh, and the other is pop fantasy, going back to Phantom of the Paradise with Brian De Palma or Conan or uh, The Crow, now Judge Dredd, Street Fighter, we're doing something called Elf Quest. We were very fortunate to sign a production deal with Edward Pressman Films. And uh, he's the fellow who has produced, um, he produced the two Conan movies. The guy is very committed to this type of film and he's very interested in comics. So we signed a production deal with him. And the reason I'm looking into the camera, and it's not Wendy and I looking into the camera, is that as we speak, Wendy's in California, she's working on the storyboards for the Elf Quest animated film. Uh, we've had some crazy suggestions. Um, uh, Burgess Meredith for the character of Two Edge. Uh, Natasha Kinski for the character of Lita. Uh, Brenda Vaccaro uh, could do a wonderful, rough female warrior voice. Marvel, which has yet to score a major film hit, has several movies in development, including the X-Men movie from 20th Century Fox. I've never been able to figure that out. I've had people suggest, somebody said Robert De Niro to me recently, someone else said uh, Harvey Keitel. I, I'm not sure who, who should play. I don't know, Tony Danza. I don't know. The next Marvel movie, actually to hit the theaters, however, might be Cage, based on the former Power Man character. Ron Friedman, producer of the Marvel Action Hour, recently completed a script for Cage. Other movies include the second Fantastic Four movie, Blade the Vampire Hunter, Black Panther, Ghost Rider, Daredevil, and Elektra. But what about Iron Man? Actually, uh, a choice done by uh, uh, Marvel's artist Alex Ross and Timothy Dalton uh, as uh, Iron Man is a pretty good choice. He's got the looks, he's got the uh, mustache. <laughs> the most awaited movie from Marvel, however, is the Spider-Man movie. After years of different scripts, directors, and studios, there's finally hope. Maybe. You forgot to say please. <laughs> Jim Cameron, the guy behind the Terminator movies, is scheduled to write, direct, and produce Spider-Man for Carl Co. Pictures. However, Carl Coe is embroiled in a series of lawsuits involving MGM, 21st Century, and Viacom over Spidey's film rights. A source linked to Cameron told Inside Comics that he's going ahead with the picture anyway, and production could start as early as February of 95. Oh, it's going to be the greatest movie ever made. Jim Cameron, I used to think, was just a great director who also was, a great, was also able to write movies. 
but I find, having read his treatment for the movie, he's a great writer who also is able to be a great director. I mean, the treatment he wrote, the story he wrote for this movie is sensational. I would have been proud to have written it. They are. And I can't tell you anything about it. He wants to keep it a secret, but I want to tell you, if it, it's just exciting as can be. And we hope to have it out before the public in the summer of uh, 96. Stay tuned for more comic book movies and information about the new Superman movie later in the show. Looking at comics this week, I want to talk about a great book. It's called Gregory from Piranha Press. Piranha is an imprint of DC Comics. Uh, it was sort of a prototype for the Vertigo line, if you're a big fan of that. Gregory is about a little kid. He's in a mental institute, and he's in a straitjacket, and he has these little friends, Herman Berman, uh, Wendell and Mouse, and it's a very funny book. It's from Mark Hempel, who uh, you might recognize. He's doing the artwork on the last story of Sandman. Gregory is a funny book. Pick it up. I think you will like what you see. Another book I would like to recommend to you is Spider-Man from Marvel Comics. You know this story. A guy named Peter Parker, bitten by a radioactive spider, and now he is one of Earth's greatest heroes ever. Some real interesting stuff happening with Spidey right now. His clone from the 70s is back, and that whole situation is getting real messed up. A lot of old villains are popping up again. It's getting good. Pick it up. I'm not a big fan of Spider-Man anymore. I used to be a big fan back when uh, Jim Shooter was editor-in-chief of Marvel. The continuity's gotten a little out of hand. I think Spider-Man's reached the point uh, that Superman reached a little while back, and uh, they need to clean up the title. You know, that clone issue has really blown up, I mean, into a big deal in our industry now. Let's talk to some people who know what's going on. As a matter of fact, <laughs> we weren't going to have a clone in one of our stories. We had a story all written up that included a clone, and, and I guess Marvel and DC heard about it and, and quickly drummed up their own pseudo-clone stories and got them out before ours. So, you know, we decided to let them have that good idea, and, and we've got an even better one that we're going to use, and undoubtedly they'll steal that one as soon as opportunity avails it. No clones as yet. Of course, I could be a clone, and I could be like evil Mark McClellan, or dark Mark McClellan, and could be telling you, you know, putting you off the track. You know, we just don't know this. But we do have mutant cuffs. Uh, no, there are no clones. No, I have some pride. But uh, I, I've just been informed we have three, three clones. So. The uh, cloning's an interesting storyline. It's something to, that if you can do it right, I think you could pull off uh, something good. The, it's, it was kind of um, a catch-all science fiction cliche in the late 70s for, for a lot of fiction. But. Um, not that I know of, but Tom DeFalco was standing right over there. You can ask him. Can I ask him? Excuse me, excuse me, Mr. DeFalco, could you come on camera for just a minute? <laughs> they want to know if in the next year or so we're working with clones. Uh, if, we're, if FF is working with clones? We think clones are going to be very big in uh, 95, so we'll probably get a clone, clone or two in there. Yes, we will send in the clones. But, but they will be alternate reality clones. Well, I didn't want to spill the beans, you know, but uh, Iron Man himself is a clone. He really died back in Vietnam in issue 39 of Tales of Suspense. He himself is a clone. Dr. Yinsen, that's not a suit of armor they created. That's just a living clone, Iron Man show. And then they created the artificial Tony Stark to go inside him later on. <laughs> I've been thinking about that. When it comes to clones, I'm really beside myself. Har, har, har. Cosmic Comics, on the White Horse Pike in Berlin, New Jersey, just off Route 30, midway between Atlantic City and Philadelphia. Golden Age, Silver Age, and Modern Age comics. T-shirts, trading cards, magic cards, and sports cards. Cosmic Comics also has mail service. Comics delivered right to your home. For more information, call 609-768-7117. That's 609-768-7117. Cosmic Comics. For collectibles, if you want it, we'll find it. more information. Hi, I'm Fove. If you want to get inside my comics, watch Inside Comics.
Taking a look at today's Super Game, a Super Game is a game about superheroes or heroic exploits. Today's Super Game is Mortal Kombat 2. This is from Acclaim. It's the great game that everybody has been waiting for, a sequel to Mortal Kombat. And uh, it's pretty good. I enjoy it because there's lots of blood. I didn't have to find no stupid blood code. And uh, there's all new characters beating the hell out of each other. It's great. Mortal Kombat 2 looks good, and the ultra-violence is actually really cool, but it's just too hard a game to play. I really don't like it for that fact. I mean, you have to, like, AA, BB, left, right, right, right. It's too much. Come on. For a video game, I'm sorry. Give me Street Fighter any day. You just need a, need a little practice, Nikki. Uh, read the directions and check out all the special m maneuvers and practice. Uh, play against your friends because the computer will kick your butt up and down, even if you set it on very easy. Let's rate this game on the Mighty Meter. I gotta give Mortal Kombat 2 a four and a half. I give Mortal Kombat 2 a two and a half. Two and a half? <laughs> I can't believe you. You don't like Mortal Kombat What, is this a running 2. gag now? <laughs> uh, it's too hard. It's too hard. <laughs> Inside Comics caught up with Len Wein at the San Diego convention. Len is responsible for Wolverine, Swamp Thing, and a whole host of other great creations. Here he is comic book veteran Len Wein has been a fan favorite for years. Uh, how did I get started in comics? Uh, I'm one of those very rare weird people. I'm very lucky. It's what I always wanted to do. I didn't fall into the business. When I was a kid I was sick a great deal of the time and I was seven years old in the hospital and my father brought me a stack of comic books to keep me occupied that changed my life. That's what I wanted to do from that point and I love the comic book business. Uh, when I was in the eighth grade, I guess I was 12 or 13, I had an art teacher who looked at a drawing of a shark, of all things that I had done, and said, you have artistic talent, you can actually draw. And I went, oh good, and I can get into comics. And spent my entire school career learning to draw. I was an art major, I majored in the art in high school, and in college, I took every drawing class I could. I wrote only as a way of giving myself something to draw. And years later, when I brought in some samples of work that had been done by myself and Marv Wolfman, who was my partner at the time, things that, that he had written and I had drawn, Joe Orlando, was the editor at DC, who looked at our work and said, well, the art needs a lot of work yet, but the writing's pretty good. If you guys are interested in submitting stories for House of Mystery, which is a book he was editing at the time, he'd be glad to see them. Now, I wasn't really a writer. Marv was the writer, but I went home, and he went home, and we both came up with individual story ideas and submitted them, and the very first thing I ever submitted was bought. Most fans know him for creating two of the most popular characters in comics, Wolverine and the Swamp Thing. I had been writing various other things for Marvel, including a character called, God help me, Brother Voodoo, which was all set in Jamaica, and all the characters had Jamaican accents, which is something I like doing when I write, writing characters with accents. Roy Thomas, who was editor-in-chief at Marvel at the time, came up to me one day and said, I love the accents you do. I wish I could do those. I have a name for a character, Wolverine. I want you to create a character called Wolverine. I go with the name. I said, well, why? He said, well, I want to hear how you do a Canadian accent. And I went home, researched Wolverine, and the character derived from what Wolverines are, short, nasty little things with vicious claws. So Swamp Thing was sort of an accident. A lot of people say that it was the, derived from the old Theodore Sturgeon story, Hit, and, and the character of, of the Heat. Both of them I learned about after I did the short story. Uh, it was simply one of those things, I need work, I have to come up with a story idea, and it came to me on the subway, the original short story idea. I pitched it to Joe Orlando, who was the editor of, of House of Mystery, House of Secrets. He liked it, he made a couple of minor suggestions, we were looking for an artist, and that weekend I was at a party with Bernie Wrightson, who was a friend of mine, and uh, he was going through some emotional breakup with a girlfriend. I said, you know, I've written this story that just sort of sums that kind of feeling. I'm going to read this. He read it, loved it. We did the story together, and it was the best-selling book DC published that month. And they wanted to do an ongoing series immediately. And we didn't want to do that. We didn't want to water down the emotional impact of the story we had written. It took us a year to figure out you know, we don't have to write about the same character. We can just do something that's like that thing. And so we, we recreated Swamp Thing and went from there. Besides writing for comics, Lynn is also writing for animated TV shows like The Exo Squad. I've written three episodes of the animated Exo I've done a miniseries for Tops based on the animated series Exo Squad. 
that uh, is illustrated by Joe Staten and I think Bill Anderson. That'll be out later this fall. And so, and I've also written three episodes of the animated series at this club that will be airing as part of their package. It, it, it is one great story. The entire extra stuff, they unlike almost any other animated series I've ever seen, isn't really short episodes. Everything's in story arcs, all part of one vast story that resolves itself in those 65th episodes. Currently, fans can read Len's work in Gunfire, a superhero comic for DC. A superhero who's not quite like anyone else out there, I hope. Uh, sort of a very reluctant hero. A guy who developed a power, a very mechanical power, really to fire anything. Anything he touches is a gun in his hand. And who's basically a pacifist, doesn't want to be able to do this. And Dark Dominion, a defiant comic book that blends horror, mystery, and superheroes. Of all the things I'm doing for Defiant, my favorite project is something called Dark Dominion. I've been writing that since the first issue, and I'm having a great time. It's the most fun I've had of a mystery character since the old days of Swamp Thing and The Phantom Stranger, which I both wrote to DC. Uh, I think he's probably unique. He is a 54-year-old writer. We have a hero named Michael Alexander, middle-aged guy who's never done anything physical, really, in his life, who discovers that everything we've ever seen out of the corner of our eyes, and those are the things we're always seeing, we're going, what was that, are there. That there is another world that exists right inside ours, this dark dominion. And he discovers how to move into it. And on the dark dominion, he's the most powerful person on Earth. So you've got this little middle-aged guy who, on our world, who would never know this walking past you in the street, and who in the, the Dark Dominion is the character called Glimmer, and the Glimmer of Hope, the most powerful being on Earth. What? My client's work offends you. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. Goofy, baby, dog. Love the music, but listen, if you're gonna play in public, you're gonna have to make these changes. Imagine all the art that could have been if it were not for censorship. enjoyed Mantis. Uh, I would say it's an average superhero series. Um, it was written by Sam Hamm, who also did the screenplays for Batman, and take that for good or ill. Um, but it was developed by uh, Sam Raimi as well, who directed Army of Darkness, which was a pretty good movie. I really enjoyed what they did with Mantis on the regular series premiere. I think it has a lot of potential, and it's just going to keep getting better as time goes on. I enjoyed the pilot a little bit more, I think, because uh, I missed the two Nubian scientist characters, but they cut them out. Uh, but the, the show does have potential, and I'll keep looking for it in the future. Let's rate Mantis on the Mighty Meter. I'm going to give Mantis a three. I'm going to give Mantis a three and a half. More and more comic book creators are looking to place their creations on the silver screen. We're, in terms of producing movies for the big screen, we're talking to several of the majors to come out with, with real movies. I think I'd want to write Bloodshot. The, uh, I, if uh, Solar came to mind at one point, but I think I would rather write Bloodshot if I, if I had a chance to, to work on a movie. There, there's currently some negotiations going on to try to create a Grimjack movie. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones could do it. Uh, Edward James Holmes almost could do it. Um, uh, oh, uh, originally Jack Palance was part of the idea uh, of it, uh, uh, and I think was part of the physical archetype when, when Tim Truman designed the character. Batman Forever, the third Batman movie, was scheduled to begin filming in September with Val Kimber as the Dark Knight, Chris O'Donnell as Robin, Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face, and Jim Carrey as the Riddler. Look for new parts of Gotham and a new Batmobile in June of 95.
Warner Brothers has reacquired any and all future film rights to the Superman movies. John Peters, Batman producer, will produce, but look for a new Superman. Christopher Reeves has vowed not to play the Man of Steel. Rumor has it that the Superman movie will feature his climactic battle with the villain Doomsday. And speaking of villains, there's also talk of a Lobo movie, but the project still lacks a good script. The stuff I've seen is rubbish, you know. It's... However, having said that, I should qualify it. Uh, television and cinema is a very, very different uh, medium from comics. And they have their own way of putting a show together, putting a character together. And I'm sure they know best as to what's commercial and what isn't. So I mean, I've not got any desire to work for the cinema, to be honest. I would rather like, write the Lobo comic and have somebody else base the movie on that. Other movies to watch for are The Badger from Paramount. Casper and Richie Rich, based on the Harvey comics, with Macaulay Culkin as the world's richest kid. What a stretch. Judge Dredd, starring Sylvester Stallone, Street Fighter with Jean-Claude Van Damme, Tank Girl with Laurie Petty, and Mortal Kombat, based on the hit video game. Finally, the comic book company to really watch for is Dark Horse. Spoken! Other possible projects from Dark Horse include X, Pit Bulls, Virus, The Machine, Cemetery, Accident Man, and Black Cross. What promises to be even bigger than The Mask, however, is Time Cop. I went ten rounds for John L. Sullivan himself. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Tyson beat Stinks on TV. Good or bad, comic book movies are a staple of Hollywood in the 90s. Keep watching for your favorite comic at a theater near you. Inside Comics is having a contest, a big contest. Uh, it all has to do with the X-Men live action movie. Take a postcard and send it to us. On that postcard, have five X-Men that you have picked and the actors and actresses that you want to play them in the upcoming X-Men movie. Send your postcards to... Inside Comics X-Men Contest, P.O. Box 10035, Philadelphia, PA, 19108. Please include your name, age, and the type of stuff you want to win. The winner will be in our Inside the Lines newsletter. a platinum edition of Bloodfire number one from Lightning Comics. If you would like to win a cool comic, send your letter to Inside Comics, P.O. Box 10035, Philadelphia, PA, 19108. Please include your name, age, a question, and the type of stuff you'd like to win. Tune in next week on Inside Comics when we'll be at the big National Comic Book Convention. We will also be interviewing hit writer Joe Duffy. See you next week. Bye-bye.